the sedentary lifestyles of most Americans, poor lymphatic circulation is common. Now, the lymph, the lymph uh, transports poisons. The lymph transports wastes. And the lymph transports fatty nutrients, both. The fact that the lymph is transporting toxic waste and the lymph is transporting fatty vitamins is important to recognize because if we're, our lymph is all clogged up from toxicity, fatty vitamins and fatty nutrients aren't going to get delivered to cells. So no matter how much vitamin E or vitamin A or vitamin D or essential fatty acids you're taking, if your lymphatic system is all clogged up from toxins, your cells are still going to be deprived, even if you're supplementing. And I'll tell you, in my experience, most people are going to have an issue, at least after a certain age, at least after the age of 40 or 50, most people are going to have an issue with stagnation of the lymph. If you have heart disease issues, if you have hypertension issues, if you have liver issues, if you have digestive issues, the chances are really good that you're dealing with sluggish lymph. Breast cancer is an epidemic, and guess what? Breast cancer and sluggish lymph and clogged lymph go hand in hand. That alone, if you're a woman, that alone, the, one out of eight women are going to get breast cancer, diagnosed with breast cancer. That alone is a good reason to make sure you're keeping your lymph clean. Lots of ways to do it. Pretty much everything we talk about on this program involves at least a little, uh, it has a little bit of a, a, a lymphatic cleansing factor. Pretty much everything, exercise, breathing, dietary control keeping your sugar intake down, intermittent fasting, all these are great ways to clean the lymph. A rebounder, hanging upside down on, a, on an inversion device, that's another great way to move your lymph, to keep your lymphatic circulation moving. And all of this means that you're going to have more essential fats, more vitamin D and E and A and K delivered to the cells. And you'll have better detoxification as well because the lymph is also charged with lim uh, eliminating toxicity. If you have any intestinal issues, the odds are really good that you're going to have a lymphatic issue as well. That's because the lymph opens up into the intestine. There are openings in the intestine uh, that lead right into the lymph. In fact, when we eat a fatty food, the fatty food goes right into the lymph through the intestine. We eat crappy fatty foods, crappy fatty foods go into the lymph right through the intestine. There are these little holes that open up in the intestine right into the lymph. If we have food allergens or food toxins, chances are pretty good those are going to get into the lymph. And likewise, lymphatic stagnation and lymphatic issues can ensue. If you have bile issues, if you had a gallbladder removed, if you have liver disease, if you have metabolic syndrome, the odds are all good that you have some kind of impairment in your lymphatic circulation. And that means fatty vitamin deficiency, at least in effect, and that means fatty or a vitamin E deficiency, at least in effect, at the level of a cell, even if you're supplementing. Now, if you're supplementing with vitamin E, at least you'll be able to, the odds are a little less that you're going to be, a little less likely that you're going to be deficient. It's a little less likely you'll be deficient, but still, depending on how clogged up that lymph is. So here's a good strategy for you. Take your vitamin E and then jump on a rebounder. Take your, uh, after you eat your fatty food, jump on a rebounder, improve that lymphatic circulation, improve the body's ability to process those fats. There's a really neat form of vitamin E that we never talk about here. And if you have any kind of lymphatic issue, you might want to know about this. We'll tell you what it is when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, or if you're interested, interested in joining the Brightside Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or head over to brightsideben.com or my blogs, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off of the website. Okay, let's see here. Oh, if you have a... If you have a lymphatic issue, if you have a gallbladder removed, if you have any reason to suspect fat malabsorption, intestinal problems, etc., you're very likely going to be deficient in fatty vitamins from uh, the University of Sheffield. Large proportion of this is an article that was uh, this is published by uh, doo -doo -doo, BMJ, the British Medical Journal, Open Gastroenterology. 
Large proportion of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, patients are vitamin D deficient. Well, yeah, if you have IBS, you're not going to be absorbing your fats. Now, it could also be that vitamin D deficiency causes IBS because of the relationship between vitamin D and the intestine. Nonetheless, the fact remains, if you've got an intestinal problem or any problem absorbing or utilizing fats, you're very likely going to be deficient in fatty vitamins, and that includes vitamin E, which is why you want to know about something called vitamin E, TPGS. T as in Tom, P as in Paul, G as in girl, S as in Sam, TPGS. Vitamin E, TPGS, is a specialized form of vitamin E that can be helpful for folks who are dealing with fat malabsorption syndrome. And by the way, cystic fibrosis is another place where uh, you're going to be deficient in fatty vitamins. Cystic fibrosis and, and fat deficiency go hand in hand. Uh, from the Journal of Pediatric Gastroenterology and Nutrition, Vitamin E, tissue vitamin E levels are low in patients in cy- with cystic fibrosis who do not receive supplements, but can be normalized in most children by supplementing with vitamin E. Cystic fibrosis is a, a, a genetic disease where you develop cysts in the pancreas and various secreting parts of the body, the tear ducts and the, and the, uh, and mostly digestion, the lungs, also mo- mostly digestion, but also the lungs, the liver perhaps, the exocrine glands, as they call them. These are secreting glands. When you have cystic fibrosis, you get all clogged up inside, and fat absorption, is su- fat absorption suffers. So supplementing with fatty vitamins and, fat- and enzymes is important if you have cystic fibrosis. But you don't need cystic fibrosis to be dealing with fat deficiency following malabsorption issues. So if you have any reason to suspect fat malabsorption, Not only do you want to supplement with your fatty vitamins, but you may want to consider this vitamin E TPGS, which is a water-soluble form of vitamin E. It's kind of interesting. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Let's go to John in Michigan, I believe. Is that Michigan, John? Yes, uh, Happy New Year, Ben. Happy New Year to you, my friend. What's going on? Uh, I have a friend that had some... uh, laser work done on the face to remove layers of skin because of some spots. Okay. Does that sound like a good procedure? Mm, it sounds like a pretty dramatic way to remove spots. Now, uh, when you say spots, you mean spots or do you mean patches? Well, Pat- I think they're white spots or, you know, uh, uh, on okay. the arm. Too. There was on the arm at one well, time, too. That's the way, la- that's the way German, uh, plastic surgeons make money, basically. If you have white, unless you just want to cosmetically get rid of your white spots, and I suppose that's, that'll, you know, that's a reason to do it for cosmetic purposes, but the fact remains they're probably coming back. If you've got white spots, you've got a biochemical reason for those white spots, and they're not going to disappear just because you burn them off. However, from a cosmetic standpoint, you know, who am I to say? What I can tell you is if you have laser surgery or plastic surgery or even something as mild as a chemical peel, all of which can be helpful for stimulating and for turning on the growth of connective tissue and reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, follow it up immediately with your vitamins. Just like we always say, the best time to take your nutritional supplements is when you come home from the gym because your your body is primed to absorb nutrients when it's in a slightly deficient state after a workout. The same thing is true about the skin. After you peel the skin, after you have a chemical peel, even after you use alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid on, on your skin, if you're just using it at home, that's the best time to put your vitamin C on the skin. That's the best time to put your topical nutrients in the skin. The skin will absorb those nutrients the way a dry sponge sucks up water. Likewise, laser surgery, plastic surgery, any surgical procedure, the skin will suck up those nutrients like a dry sponge sucks up water after it's been damaged or traumatized or stimulated in any way. So whether or not you know, it's a good idea to do laser surgery or, plastic, or have the, the white spots burnt off or dark spots burnt off or peeled off, you know, that's a matter of opinion, and, and you'll have to form your own, uh, make your own judgment on that. I believe in being as, as gentle on the body as possible with the exception of quick bursts of exercise, which is what the best way to exercise physically is and also the best way to exercise the skin is. Quick bursts of alpha-hydroxy acids and then remove them. Uh, that's why I like alpha-hydroxy acid cleansers, by the way, and toners rather than alpha-hydroxy acid creams. With a cleanser and a toner, a glycolic cleanser, a glycolic toner, you get this on-off kind of, kind of action. The alpha-hydroxy acid goes on, and then you remove it. You either rinse it off or you remove it off with a cotton ball if you're using a toner. 
that having been said, once you do it, you want to follow that up with your topical vitamin C, your fat-soluble vitamin C, and whatever fatty nutrients you're going to use. So for your friend, have them uh, get them on the Omega-6 Healing Cream, the My Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and that will not only speed up the healing, but it will also stimulate collagen production and have anti-wrinkle and anti-aging benefits as well. Matter of fact, if you, send, if you have your friend uh, send me her address or his address, uh, I'll send them out a sample of my uh, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Make sure you put it on there, John, for Michigan. That would be, that would be excellent. And, and you also have the vitamin A and vitamin C. Uh, uh, yes, I got four products, of retinol. I wouldn't put the retinol on the laser surgery right after laser, but retinol has got some interesting skin lightening properties, too. So for folks who are interested in, in uh, bleaching the skin, retinol is, in fact, I think retinol is really the way to go for skin lightening because you get all the vitamin effects and you don't have to deal with toxicity. So have your friends send me an email, ben at ksco.com with their address, and then uh, and make sure they put on their John from Michigan or something. Ben, so I know one more thing with the sunscreen. I've yeah. heard that uh, keeping a high level of iodine in your system protects you also. Is that Well, that's... not so much directly, but iodine is ridiculously important. It's unbelievably important nutrient. So it'll, it'll help with everything. It's not going to directly help. Not that I know. I don't know of any direct connection between sun, between protecting from the, uh, protection from the sun and iodine, but iodine is just an overall wonderful mineral, essential mineral that's important for growth and important for uh, uh, protecting the body from cancer, important for the ovaries and the reproductive system in women, the breasts. It's just important. The adrenal glands, it's just vitally, vitally important. This doctor also said uh, that he has a, a sunscreen because this person is going down to Mexico. I'm probably going to give him a toxic one. Have okay. him use zinc oxide. Zinc oxide. Zinc oxide? Uh-huh. Zinc oxide. After laser, remember, after laser or after any kind of peel or stimulating the skin, everything is going to get absorbed. Not just vitamin C and vitamin E, not just nutrients, also toxins. So if you put octomethoxycinamate, or, and you can tell it to the doctor, by the way, or have them tell it to the doctor. If you put octomethoxycinamate or octocrylene or, or benzophenone or oxybenzone, these are all toxic sunscreens, on the skin right after laser, guess what? Your skin's going to absorb that toxic stuff just as well, uh, uh, faster, just like it's going to absorb vitamins faster. All right, we've got to take a break. Thanks for your call, John. Hope we helped you out. And if you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you when we come back on Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I've got a letter here from Art who says, I've been a diabetic for 30 years, taking insulin, and I'm now on Simvastatin, which is a statin drug, for six years. What happens if I just stop taking the statins and don't tell the doctor is it safe to stop? Well, yeah, it's safe to stop. It's not only safe to stop, it's probably a good idea to stop given all the toxicity associated with statin drugs. And nobody really knows if statin drugs are going to keep you from getting a heart attack, by the way. All the, all the measurements of the effectiveness of these things are based on statistics. Oh, you're 32% less likely. You're 5% more likely, whatever. Nobody, we're not statistics. Any given person... Any individual person is not going to be any less likely to have a heart attack if they take a statin drug. It's only statistics that tell us this. In any case, you don't want to stop taking a drug without telling your doctor. It's not fair. Now, I'm not a, you know, if you listen to this program, that I have a, a problem with the pharmacomedical model of, of drugging people to get them better. That doesn't happen, with the exception of the antibiotics. And, you know, antibiotics, of course... They have their place, and, and pain pills have their place as well. But as far as taking a drug for lowering your cholesterol to decrease the likelihood of a heart attack, I'm not buying that. However, it's not fair to your doctor to, uh, to self-medicate or self-non-medicate to, wean your, to get yourself off the drug without letting him, him know or her know what you're doing. You have to communicate with your physician. It's not right. It's not fair. And if I'm counseling somebody with, uh, with nutrition, I don't want somebody coming in and saying, don't take this nutrient or that nutrient. If I'm helping somebody, it's not fair to the, the helper. Doctors as individuals, they're trying to do a good job. It's not like they're evil people. Whether we agree or not agree, if we're going to participate with the medical model, if we're going to be under the care of a doctor, it's only fair to that doctor to tell him what you're up to in terms of uh, taking or not taking prescription medicine. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Ed in California, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, buddy? Hello. 
Ben. It's very good to speak to you. I've been listening to you for some time. Oh, good. How's it going, man? How can I help you? It's going 